Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Mart. I am Jason in Herculaneum, Missouri. Well, I'm also um, technically in Peavely as well, but I am just outside a hidden state historic site in Missouri and it's dedicated to Missouri's fifth governor, who is also known as the father of public schools in the Show Me State. Um, his grave site is just down there, um, right behind me, and there's a historical marker I'll tell you about, Governor Dunklin. Here we go. All right, so in order to get here, you gotta go on Main Street in Peavely. There's really no big sign that leads to here, so you really gotta rely on your GPS or your research. And there are a lot of homes um, nearby, so just be careful, be quiet as you can. And there are a few parking spaces. But I mean, it's not too far. And for those who are wondering, yes, this is ADA compliant as well. But I will meet you down in that area. And there is a sitting area right there for anybody who needs one. So Dunklin was, he was an educator, of course. He was also a lawyer, a businessman, having owned a tavern. But there's more to be said on that marker right over there. There's only one marker here. And that's the gravesite, which I'll take you to. But first, here is the marker. Yes, it is very sunny today. And I can tell, I mean, yeah, weather been, hasn't been really been kind to this marker. It can be hard to read for some people, but I mean, I can see it fine. But starting with, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, so <laughs> I'm just gonna kinda highlight, if you know what I mean. But Daniel Dunklin, fifth governor of Missouri. He was born near Greenville, South Carolina on January 14, 1790. Dunklin moved first to Kentucky and then to Missouri, settling with his widowed mother at Mine A. Brenton near Potosi. Potosi is not too far from here. And that was in 1810. Dunklin studied law and was admitted to the Missouri Bar, but was not very active as an attorney. He began his political career in 1815 with appointment as sheriff for Washington County by Territorial Governor William Clark. Yes, of, Willie, of Lewis and Clark. In the same year, Dunklin took as his bride Emily Haley, his boyhood sweetheart. He built a small tavern in Potosi and it soon became the general meeting place for the discussion of society and politics. And he was also a prolific reader. He supported education and was instrumental in founding the Potosi Academy, donating more than 500 volumes to the academy as well as helping to pay for the buildings. All right, so his greatest interest was in schools. He is often called the father of Missouri's public school system. He sought to establish public schools on a firm and stable basis. In 1833, the legislature passed an act authorizing the governor to appoint a committee to formulate a complete system of common and public schools. 1835, the General Assembly passed a law establishing the public school system in Missouri. The law outlined the minimum school year, established the basic curriculum, and allowed for local taxation to support schools. In the field of higher education, Dunklin recommended in 1834 that a site for a state university be chosen and partially funded through the sale of land. Five years later, the University of Missouri became a reality. And for those that don't know, it is in Columbia, Missouri, which is in the central part of the state. Now this paragraph talks about his rise to politics, like he was elected at his own tavern to be a representative of the state legislature, and then Dunklin was nominated later elected serving in the legislature from during 1822 to 1823. He spent the next four years in Potosi. Dunklin had invested in mines and his investments proved to be profitable. In 1828 he returned to politics when he was elected lieutenant governor. And then he ran for governor four years later and his support of rural issues helped carry the rural districts overcoming opponent John Bull's edge in St. Louis. And then he would resign from the governorship because at, before three, three months before the end of his term because he received the appointment of Surveyor General from Missouri and Illinois from President Andrew Jackson. The discharge of his surveyor's duties conflicted with his business interests and he retired to Potosi. And then the last years of his life as well as the cemetery. This is his wife and then that's just an early picture of Potosi. And then over here is you know, a faded picture of him. And now this is about the cemetery's history as well as the final years of Governor Dunklin. July 1844, Dunklin contracted pneumonia. He gradually grew worse and died on July 25th, 
1844. He was buried two days later in a field near Ma, or Mahe, M-A-J-E. That is what he called his home here in Herculaneum. But his son, James Dunklin, inherited the estate upon the death of his mother. And then James was forced to sell the estate in 1885 due to liens placed on the property for debts. In this sale of the estate, one acre was reserved from the only part James owned free and clear. This acre became the present Dunklin Cemetery. Following the sale, Daniel and Emily were exhumed and interred in this cemetery. The Missouri State Park Board agreed on August 25, 1965 to accept the cemetery for the purpose of erecting and maintaining a memorial park in remembrance of Daniel Dunklin. This action was a forerunner of the statute enacted in 1967 to suitably mark every grave of a former governor in this state and to maintain every grave of a former governor within this state which is not within a perpetual care cemetery. And if you've been following this channel, if you've seen my other videos, I mean, I, don't, I really don't know how many Missouri governors I've, graves I've visited so far, but at least five. I know, it's not really on my bucket list either but it just kind of happened that way all right here is the final resting place of the governor and you can tell those are new flags like somebody just um, put them here I can tell like they're not wet or anything here is the final resting place. Actually, let me see what it says down here. The widow and children to the husband and father. And then, in memory of Daniel Dunklin, born, died, and then served as governor 1832 to 1836. And this is his daughter, Emily, who's buried right next to him. It is said that it is intentionally placed. Hang on, I gotta figure out how to get out of here. Okay. <laughs> it is said that he wanted to be buried by the Mississippi River, and that, of course, did happen. However, nowadays it's really hard because it's hard to see. I mean, if you you can kind of see Illinois, the other the state on the other side of the river. But he is, the family is resting in peace next to the Mississippi River. Because if it wasn't for it, Herculaneum probably would not exist. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason at the site of Daniel Dunklin Cemetery, State Historic Site in Herculaneum, Missouri. Signing off.